Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today let's talk about widely planted yet very little known gem amongst grapes, Garnacha Tinta, also known as Granache Noir. I intentionally emphasize the color of Garnacha grape because it is an old grape variety. And as it often happens with these ancient grapes, over the time they have developed color mutations, which in many cases are now considered as separate grape varieties. Similar to other old grape varieties, determining its true origin can be challenging. Some studies suggest it might have originated in Sardinia. But at least for me, and at least for now, it appears to have roots in the Iberian Peninsula, making it of Spanish origin. Garnacha, in fact, is very much a loved grape variety by wine professionals and sommeliers. Furthermore, I predict that its ability to withstand high temperatures and drought events will result in more popularity amongst winemakers in near future. For me and others who like to challenge themselves in the blind tasting, I think it is important to note that Garnacha cannot really produce deeply colored or black wines unless it is blended with other grape varieties. There are always exceptions, of course, but usually it will be lightly or medium colored. And because it is prone to oxidation, Garnacha can easily end up towards brownish or brick in color. In terms of acidity, it can offer great balance to the fruit and body, but overall it is medium level. Similar Similarly, due to its thin skins, Garnacha will not develop high levels of tannins, but they will be rather playful and sticky, definitely not aggressive. However, Garnacha usually develops high sugar levels, resulting in wines with elevated alcohol content. Garnacha can be made into light and easy drinking red wines packed with jammy red and black fruit. And oftentimes these wines can even taste sweet, almost syrupy on the palate. However, it can also make quite concentrated and fragrant wines with density and structure. And for me, the best examples often show spicy, almost peppery character. Some winemakers and wine critics even say that it is Pinot Noir of the South, noting that it offers the same lightness and mystique. All of it is true as Garnacha delivers everything it promised and more, highlighting just how versatile the grape really is. However, it is crucial to emphasize the importance of grape grower and winemaker. Allowing it to overcrop and not paying attention to winemaking practices especially so with oxygen management, can quickly lead to disappointing results. Garnacha Tinta is a grape that can easily be self-sufficient and not necessarily requires a blending partner. If anyone wishes to challenge that, I will begin my argument with the famous Chateau Reyes. But all jokes aside, it is actually quite commonly blended often to add acidity, reduce alcohol, or just add structure. Regular blending partners of Garnacha are Syrah, Murviedra, Carignan, and Tempranillo, amongst others. In the Australia, there is an even abbreviation of the most common blend, GSM, which stands for Granache, Syrah, and Murviedra, or Mataro, as it is often called as well. Garnacha can also be a very important player in many pink wines, most notable example being Tavel, an appellation exclusively dedicated to rosé wine production. But it is also a major player in Provence rosé wines, as well as in easy drinking pink wines of Navarra, Spain. Its thin skin makes it particularly suitable for pink wine production. However, some wine critics have pointed out that sometimes it can lack acidity to make truly refreshing pink wines. What is even more fascinating about this grape is that it is also responsible for some of the most exciting fortified wines in southern France, commonly known as Vin du Naturel. The best known come from appellations Bagnols, Maori, and Rivesaltz in Roussillon. In my opinion, these wines are some of the most underrated fortified wines out there. In comparison to port-style wines, for example, they tend to have lower levels of residual sugar and alcohol. These wines can be produced in fresh and bright fruit-driven style, for example, Rivesaltz Granat, or they can also be made into more oxidative style, offering notes of dried fruits, coffee, and sweet spices. This particular wine style will be found under the labels Ambre and Tuil. 
Garnacha is like the coolest kid on the block. It is one of the few grape varieties that quite often is vinified with all of its stems. Some will note that this lowers the acidity, while others believe that it somehow makes these wines taste even fresher, while also introducing Earl Grey, black olive and earthy flavors. Additionally, Garnacha is a grape that can gracefully show off carbonic maceration. If you want to learn more about what it is, I made a video about Beaujolais wine where I'll also briefly touch the carbonic maceration topic and how it manifests itself in the wines. Depending on the region, winemaker and style intended, Garnacha can also be subject to variety of oak regimes, ranging from small new oak barrels to large neutral oak vats. For more fresh fruit-driven wines, stainless steel will dominate in winemaking and no extra aging will be required. Increasingly, winemakers are also working with concrete eggs. In the case of fortified wines, they are sometimes aged in large rounded glass bottles called bonbons that are left outside in the heat of the sun. As I mentioned right at the beginning, Garnacha is a widely planted red grape variety that can be found in almost every winemaking region that we can describe as hot and dry. Impressive amount of plantings are found in Spain, particularly Rioja, Navarra and Priorat. In Priorat you can find quite dense and even deeply colored Garnacha wines made from old bush wines. In France it is mostly found in the southern regions. It is a very important grape variety in southern Rhone, where it is a major blending partner in easy drinking red wines such as Côte du Rhône, or part of more serious wines such as Chateauneuf du Pape and Gigondas. Likewise, it is also an important grape of both dry still wines and fortified wines of Roussillon. Under the name of Cananao, it is also widely planted in Sardinia, Italy. Some of the world's oldest Grenache wines can actually be found in Australia, more specifically in Barossa and McLaren Val. Some of these are more than 100 years old. It is also widely planted in California, and it appears to me that Grenache is increasingly more appreciated for what it can truly offer offer, slowly removing the stigma of being associated with high-yielding wines from Central Wally. Instead, it is establishing itself as a grape that is capable of producing serious, concentrated, long-lived red wines. Like with every versatile and widely planted grape variety, it is very difficult to generalize about food and wine pairings. However, in my opinion, Grenache seems to be one of the best wines that can accompany savory meaty dishes. Think of hearty stews enjoyed in cool autumn evenings. It also adds lovely fruity juiciness to leaner cuts grilled on the open fire during the summertime. With lighter bodied styles, I would choose flavorsome mushroom and eggplant dishes, especially if served with melted cheese. Because of its ability to produce wines with high alcohol levels, I would be cautious when pairing these wines with spicy and chili-rich foods. Where do I begin? I mean, among the top and most sought-after producers are Chateau Rayas and Bucastel from Chateauneuf du Pape. However, more affordable examples of great quality are offered by Claude de la Oratorie de Pape and Raymond Useglio. Traveling to Roussillon for those who appreciate fortified wines, Domaine Cas offer great selection and oftentimes releases back vintages that can truly be epic. In Priorat, Spain, the top producers are Clo Magador, Alvaro Palacios, yet great wines are also made by Scala Day Winery, while more affordable are Bodegas Borsao from Campo de Borja region. In Sardinia, probably the best known and most respected producers of Cananao is Argiolas. In Australia, of course, I must mention Henschke, the Arenberg and Penfold, which offer great Grenache wines that are widely available, and I also would like to mention Torbrek. From California, look for wines of Tablas Creek and Sinquanon, though I want to mention that wines from latter are very, very expensive. As I mentioned before, Grenache is a major player in Chateauneuf-du-Pape wine region, and here's a video about it. 